Thermochemical Changes, Energy and Chemical Reactions. This unit focuses on thermal energy. The movement of thermal energy, or heat, is called thermodynamics. The thermodynamics of a system is contingent upon whether the system is open, closed, or isolated. Before we begin, we should review kinetic molecular theory. All particles of matter are in a constant and continuous state of motion. The only time they're believed not to be is at minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, absolute zero, or zero Kelvin. Temperature, as taken with a thermometer, relates to the average kinetic energy of these particles. That is, the energy these particles provide as a result of their motion. A drop in the average rate of motion translates into a drop in temperature. An increase in the particle's rate of motion translates into an increase in temperature. To get these particles to increase in speed, which thereby raises their kinetic energy, a second energy source is added. Since energy cannot be created, the addition of this energy to the particles will increase their kinetic energy, causing them to move faster and yield a higher temperature. Likewise, by transferring some of that kinetic energy away from the particles, causes a drop in their motion, reducing their average kinetic energy, and this translates into a decrease in temperature. We don't have an instrument to measure the actual amount of energy contained within particles at any one moment. but we can measure how much energy is required to influence change in the rates of particle motion. And this rate of change is evidenced by a change in temperature of the substance having energy applied to it or removed from it. Let's consider a chemical reaction, the burning of a candle. The chemical energy tied up in the chemical bonds between the atoms that make up the candle wax is liberated to the air around it. The air particles absorb this energy, increasing their rates of motion. This is interpreted as an increase in temperature of the area around the burning candle. A couple of terms. The burning candle is called the system and the air around it is called the surroundings. The energy tied up in the bonds between the atoms of a substance is called potential energy. Much of the potential energy is released during the process of combustion and absorbed into the particles surrounding the system. This energy increases their rates of motion. So in other words, Chemical potential energy is transferred into increasing the kinetic energy of the surroundings, thus raising its temperature. The degree to which the temperature of the surroundings increase enables us to calculate the amount of energy released by the system. The amount of energy required to change the average kinetic energy of air particles is a lot less than trying to change the average kinetic energy of water particles. So if the surroundings of the system is water, and in high school chemistry it frequently is, then to accurately determine the amount of energy released by the system, we need to consider how much energy is required to change the temperature of the water. The degree to which the temperature of the surroundings change requires knowledge of three facts. Firstly, the actual change in temperature, that is the difference between the temperature before the reaction and the maximum change in temperature that occurred during the reaction. The second important fact involves the mass of the surroundings undergoing the temperature change. For example, the mass of the water surrounding the system. Essentially, the greater the mass, the greater the number of particles that make up the substance and the more particles, the more energy required to change their average kinetic energy. 
and finally, the specific heat capacity of the substance. Different substances have different properties because they are made up of different combinations of particles. An amount of energy applied to one substance may change the kinetic energy of its particles to a different degree than another substance after application of the same amount of energy. So the specific heat capacity is the amount of energy in joules required to change one gram of that substance by one degree Celsius. We can come up with a general expression that links together these three components to generate an energy value. The change in kinetic energy of a substance, indicated in this expression for some unidentifiable reason as Q, and sometimes lowercase q, is equal to the products of the substance's mass, its specific heat capacity, and its change in temperature. Likewise, by algebraically manipulating this expression, we can solve for any one of these components if we know the other two and the energy involved.